Revelation is the great educational work of God. In it, we find the distinctive elements that can help lead us to recognise a divine pedagogy, one which is capable of profoundly influencing the church's educational activity. So, we've reached the second part of the directory for catechesis. And this second part of the directory begins very much like the first, with revelation. God speaking to us, communicating to us, his plan of revelation that culminates in the sending of his son, Jesus Christ. But this time we have a different emphasis. But this time we have a different emphasis. We've looked at God's revelation in Christ as being the source and the goal of our catechesis. Here we're looking at God's revelation as being, if you like, the blueprint for our catechesis, the model for how we do our catechesis. It is, as the directory has told us, the great educational work of God. And so we take it as the model for our own educational work. We can see here that the directory is emphasising the teaching aspect of catechesis. You may remember that in the first part of the directory, the directory talked of catechists as being witnesses, accompaniers and teachers. And at the beginning of the second part, we can see an emphasis on the catechist as a teacher and on catechesis as teaching but without losing sight of the fact that it's not just teaching, it's also witnessing and accompaniment. So, we're taking God's teaching style as the model for our teaching style. The directory tells us that the way of God who reveals himself and saves becomes the source and model for the pedagogy of the faith. The word pedagogy here means our method and practice of teaching. God himself has a method and practice of how he teaches, as revealed in scripture. That's what the directory means by the divine pedagogy. Now, the directory highlights a few of the key characteristics of this divine pedagogy, this divine teaching method. It describes it as an initiative of love, in which God poses questions to humanity for them to freely and faithfully respond to, and in which he communicates the truth of his mystery little by little, by degrees. Later on, we read that, like a skillful teacher, the father transforms the sufferings of his people into lessons of wisdom, adapting himself to the times and situations in which they live. And the directory gives the example of the exodus from Egypt and the period of desert wandering as an example of this. So the idea of God adapting to the times and situations in which the people of Israel find themselves, of meeting them where they are, if you like, reminds us that catechists are called to be accompaniers while also being called to be teachers. Now in the first part of the directory, we read of the importance of developing our knowledge of the faith as it is found in scripture and the teaching of the church. And we can see now that this is important, not just in terms of what we're passing on, but also how we're passing it on. The content gives us the method. The story of God's revelation, which forms the content of our catechesis, also gives us the method of our catechesis. As catechists, we are called not only to teach God, but to teach as God teaches. This notion of teaching as God teaches is picking up on and developing an idea which we were, again, introduced to in the first part of the directory. So when the directory outlined the sources, goals and tasks of catechesis, it spoke of the tasks of catechesis, namely imparting knowledge of the faith, enabling participation in the liturgy, formation in the moral life, the teaching of prayer and deeper integration into the community of the church, as being rooted in the example of Christ. They take inspiration from the way in which Jesus formed his first disciples, teaching them knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom, teaching them how to pray, and integrating them into a life of communion with himself and with each other. This is the teaching method that Jesus passed on to his church. In the second part of the directory, we're taken deeper into this idea of Jesus as our model of teaching. We read, Jesus presented himself to his disciples as their only teacher 
and at the same time as a patient and faithful friend. And again, we have a reminder that the three descriptions of a catechist that the directory has given us, witness, accompanier and teacher, can't be separated out. Jesus accompanies us as a friend while he educates us as a teacher. So how can we ensure that our pedagogy mirrors the divine pedagogy? How can we ensure that we're teaching as God teaches? Well, the directory gives us several criteria for us to bear in mind when we catechise to ensure that we're allowing ourselves to be inspired and guided by the divine pedagogy. We'll go over what they are briefly. Firstly, Christocentricity. In other words, having Christ at the centre. Just as the whole of God's revelation from the very beginning of creation and the first covenants he makes with humanity points forward to Jesus Christ, so should all of our catechesis focus on Christ. Next, salvation history. Remembering that God acts over time, revealing himself gradually. Focusing on Christ as the centre of our catechesis doesn't mean we ignore how God has revealed himself in the past before Christ through the people and events of the Old Testament. Then we have the primacy of grace. This means remembering that the work of salvation is not our work, it's God's. God has the initiative and God brings the work to completion. Our job is simply to respond, to cooperate with that grace as fully as we can. Next, ecclesiality. Ecclesial means related to the church. So catechesis, which is ecclesial, is catechesis that remembers that our faith is lived out in community, in the church which Christ founded, the body of Christ, in which we are all united by his grace. And finally, the final criterion is the integrity of the faith. The different teachings of the Catholic faith are all integrated. They all fit together into one unified, coherent truth. Here, the directory references St Paul's letter to the Ephesians, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Our catechesis should reflect this fact that the faith is an integrated, coherent unity of teachings, all centred around the truth of Jesus Christ. And we can find guidance and assistance in bringing these criteria to life in our catechesis by looking to this book here, The Catechism of the Catholic Church. So the directory tells us that the catechism offers a clear and dependable response to the legitimate right of all the baptised to have access to the presentation of the church's faith in its entirety and in a systematic and comprehensible form. So here in the catechism we find the faith presented in this Christocentric, ecclesial, integrated way that the directory describes, in a way that's going to be incredibly helpful for us in our own catechesis. So, how could we sum up what the directory says about God's pedagogy? We've seen that God's pedagogy, God's method and practice of teaching, forms the model for our own catechesis. And we can ensure that our pedagogy is inspired by the divine pedagogy by being attentive to the following criteria. Christocentricity, salvation history, the primacy of grace, the importance of the community of the church and the integrity of the faith. And we can find guidance and assistance in bringing these criteria to life in our catechesis by looking to the catechism of the Catholic Church. So next, the directory will be going into some more detail about how we can put these criteria into practice in our catechesis. <laughs>